Welcome back to another 3ds Max tutorial. Last week, if you guys remember, uh, we left off with we did the we did the projection map for the camera, as well as got the sky in there. So I'll be picking up right where we left off from there. I've, so, I've seen a lot of comments in the in the in the comment section and a lot of tweets that have been asking about. They're like, they're like, oh, you didn't talk about this in this tutorial. You didn't say you have to click here. These tutorials, in order to keep them in order to keep them sh short and tight, I'm assuming that you've done all the previous ones leading up to it. Uh, if you're having trouble following it, look back to the previous ones and make sure you've absorbed all that information first before moving into the next one. So it should all accumulate into one body of awesome knowledge. So this is the scene, same as last time. Let me hit render here. I added a few nifty uh, new objects there. The reason why I added these objects was just to demonstrate a few cool little lighting things. Like this is uh, this yellow one, you'll notice it's very subtle, but on the gray sphere, you can see the, uh, you can see the, the yellow bouncing off of it. That's what the indirect illumination does in addition to getting the skylight bouncing around other bounce light. Is it really, it allows objects to realistically cast light onto each other. We want to get our actual reflections from the day, the day of in there so that we can get stuff from behind the camera as well as the walls more accurately reflecting as well as the sky more accurately reflecting. Hit uh, 8 to open up the environment effects window and you'll see that uh, default V-Ray sky is the current one that's in there and I've dri dragged it over there and made an instance of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually clear that out and replace it with a bitmap. And that bitmap is going to be the street spherical environment. So you have a bunch of options here. We've got texture, we've got environment for this material to how to map it to there. And the method we're going to use for this is obviously a spherical environment. Let's hit render, and you'll see that immediately you'll notice a big difference. It all looks screwed up. So right now what you're seeing here that's being rendered is from the camera's point of view, we're seeing the spherical environment off in infinity, and so that's why it looks so distorted. The reflections are way too dark, and the whole scene's gotten darker because we don't have enough illumination coming from the sky, because now it's using this spherical environment for the illumination. We need to align this street properly, because it doesn't know exactly where to rotate, it doesn't know how you were, so the way you do this, and this is, this is kind of takes a bit to get your head over, wrapped around, is using the offset, the UV offset as well as the tiling. So offset, we're gonna bump this up. You can see in the little window, right over here, you can see it rotating around. So bump it up a little bit here. Right, let's go to 6.6 there. It's inverted. So the way you invert it, or you basically flop it left to right, is by putting this to negative one. That's looking, that's looking straight down the street. And although it's dark, you can see that the reflections on the right side there, let's, let's brighten that reflection up a little bit. The spherical environment, hopefully you guys all watched the photosynthetic tutorial that I did a few days ago. Um, that, the, that, when it comes out, it comes out as a JPEG, which is a non-HDR image, so it doesn't really know how bright it is. So right now, by default, it's, having, it's registering at a much lower luminance day than what a daylight day would be. There's no way to have it, a scale for it to know how bright it is. So you kind of have to just like manually tell it to be brighter based on eyeballing it. Um, so you see the reflections right there now are very dark. Let's brighten those up. The way we do that is go down here to output, Open that up and output amount. Uh, let's just bump it up a little bit here. A little 20. This is getting this is getting more into an acceptable range. It's still pretty dark. We'll come back to it and brighten up a little bit later. But you can see that the the red building is reflecting from the left side like it should and is being continued by the scene geometry. The 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 tan building is being reflected as it should and be continued. We now have reflections from behind the camera as well as the sky up there. So that's that's great. That's exactly what we wanted. Our image obviously is is not looking not looking great yet, and it also doesn't have. There's no way for us to really gauge if we have the exposure right. So the environment map is basically whatever you put in the slot, that's what it's, that's what it's registering as the background. So let's swap that out again. Swap it out, put a bitmap in there. And this time, we're going to put our original image back in there. Make an instance of it right there. So we have all three of these ducks right in a row. Double click it to open it up over here. And let's go up there. This one is going to be mapped as environment screen. So now we have the background is being, is being put right through there. We're seeing it straight through. However, now the lighting is dark and not really functioning and uh, it's all discolored again. Let me, let me double check something. If you hit F10, you pull up your V-Ray tab here. Open up color mapping. Um, here's an interesting checkbox that may be checked. Effect background. I'm going to turn that on and hit render. You'll notice some of you guys, if you don't remember to turn this off, your sky will come out rendering like this. Basically it's making it so that the background gets affected by the exposure control as well as the render settings you're doing. So you're seeing it's coming out much darker now we don't want to have that on because basically we're going to use this as our control to gauge the luminance of everything else, how it should be, how it should be tuned in. Now, if only there was a way, as we saw, we have these three things, if only there was a way to draw lighting from the sky that we had, uh, draw reflections from that spherical environment that we had, and then, also, and then also have the background in here for viewing so we can tune in our exposure properly, it's right through. Well, I'm glad you asked because there absolutely is. It's called the environment switchers basically. So we have three options here. Global, global environment override, we've got reflection refraction override, and then we also have just refraction override, which actually like overrides the override. So we're going to turn those both on. What we want, we want the light to be coming from the V-Ray sky because that renders the fastest and it's nice, nice and even and very controllable. So V-Ray sky, 
I'm going to drag that over and put that in the skylight override. Say OK, instance. Um, the reflections bitmap, the spherical environment, we want that to be the reflections slash refractions for this scene, both the same. Um, so I'm going to drag that over and put that into here. Boom. And we have, of course, the, the bitmap background. We want that to be, as it already is, right in environment effects. So that's going through there. So put all three of those in there and hit render and let's look at the difference. So now, the wonderful thing is that our background is being filled in by the pixels. So we can use that as a control to measure exposure. We have the reflection is coming from our spherical environment. And the lighting on the spheres is coming from our V-ray sky that we have in there. This non-affected pixels that's coming through our background, we can meter the exposure by right-clicking on it. The blue channel is at 0.9, green's at 0.9, red's at 0.7. So that's, that's the exposure that's at about 90% exposure. Um, and if you look at the sky, right-click it on the ball. Since our ball is 100% reflective, it should be reflecting 100% of the light, so it should be the exact same illuminance pretty much, or relatively close. And you can look right now, it's not. It's at 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Okay. So, the way we're going to fix that is we're going to go into our material editor, open up the bitmap there, and up the output of it. Put like 70 in there. Hit render. And you'll notice the difference is now the reflections just got brighter. So, we're going to right click on there. Now we're getting uh, 50s, 70s, there, 60s, 70s, and we're having this much, much more balanced. So, you want to walk that in basically, bump it up a little more, bump it up to 80, and that'll give us the proper luminance. Now we know we've matched our reflections to that. Um, Exposure-wise, for the amount of light that's coming to the scene, um, we're eyeballing that based on the, uh, based on the, the controls we have for the V-Ray uh, sky, which is right in here, which we've already walked in in the previous tutorial, so we have that about right. And, uh, and we also have our background, of course, visible in there. So that pretty much wraps up what I wanted to talk to you guys about today, which is uh, basically kind of the, almost the final steps. We're getting pretty close here, guys. This is, this is now, you're able to put together a very good image with this. And so it's a, the lighting is a combination of the sun, the V-Ray sky, we have reflections coming from the spherical environment. We have reflections coming from the projection mapped environment. And we have it all going seamlessly into a scene and rendering out quickly and efficiently. Okay, so for your homework, I want you to, I'll tweet out these files again. I want you to download these background files and follow along all the way up to this point. Um, next week, this is pretty much, this is pretty much, we built the light for our scene. And so next week I'm gonna talk about preparing it for render and how to properly do that. Cause this is not actually how you render something out having like this. Even though it looks pretty good, we can do so much better. Secondary piece of homework. I want you to go outside, to find, a, find a DSLR, find something, take a, take a picture, take a shot, get a still shot, and uh, also find a way to make an HDR, make your own HDR, and I want you to tweet at me a custom photo that's not using the assets that I've done um, to build it. To make it very easy on yourself, I recommend doing it at like 3 p.m. or something like that in mid-afternoon in broad daylight. That way, what I've done in this tutorial will work pretty much one-to-one -one with you since your light will be just about the same. If you want to get adventurous though, try to do it at sunset, try to do it at different times, try to do it indoor if you want to be really brave. Um, and uh, try to adapt and figure out how to do it that way. But I'll, I'll talk more about that in the future. Um, so tweet at me, at least one custom one, as well as do the tutorials up to this point and follow along with the assets that I have. Have a good week, guys. Talk to you next week.